if you do not have diabetes yet, you have to exert all effort to stay away from these diseases. Protect yourself from developing diabetes because it is a bad disease from all aspects. Number one, by just bumping your foot on a lightly on a surface, you can develop a wound that will never heal. It will just deepen and deepen into an ulcer. And this, is, this will later on result to the to the conversion of your foot into a black object. That means it's already dead and it will have to be amputated or cut off. And next thing you know, it's below the knee amputation. That is what we do as surgeons. And then above the knee amputation. And later on, hip already amputation. And then the next year, you will develop, you will have your other leg cut off also. So it's really a mutilating type of disease that you have to stay away from. And it can also harm your eyes. In a disease called diabetic retinopathy, affecting our eyes, it will produce blood clots inside. And later on, you will become blind. <coughs> Why, it can also cause a lot of diseases in your kidney. One disease is diabetic nephropathy, which will later on kill both of your kidneys. And once your, both of your kidneys are dead, then you cannot filter your toxins anymore. And you will have to go to the hospital once, twice, three times, four times a week to undergo dialysis. And in, the, in a country such as the Philippines, we cannot afford dialysis. It's something like 3,000 to 5,000 per session. And if you undergo four dialysis in one, one week, then you would have spent 3,000 times four, that's 12,000 pesos. That is already about 1,000 dirhams. So we cannot afford that. And not only that, dialysis ki killing your kidney, you, because of the medications that you take if you are diabetic, you will transform yourself into a human walking pharmacy because you will be bringing all these drugs inside your bag. And every time you will have to know which drugs you will have to take by pricking your own self. If you just bring that glucometer, you, you prick yourself and know what your blood glucose level is now. And then you will know which medication to take. So you are not only a walking pharmacy, you are also a walking laboratory. And that is a very bad thing to do to yourself, especially if you understand that the diabetic injects his own insulin sometimes in his abdomen, in his abdomen. And it, is, it will make his life very, very sad to have to undergo all that. So here in DXN, we have the yes or no test that I developed for diabetes. This is just a set of questions that you ask yourself and answer them in your head only with a yes or a no. And you will count your yeses and you will know at least if now you have diabetes already or you might develop it in the near future and you just don't know about it. So first question, Is your age 40 years old and above? Do you have a family history of diabetes? Meaning your father, your mother, your aunt, your uncle, your grandfather, your grandmother, were they diabetics? Third question, did you ever experience frequent hunger? You just ate, you want to eat again. Frequent thirst, you just took water and now you want to drink again. Or frequent urination, you just went to the comfort room and now you want to go again. If these three symptoms will exist in one person, then that is already suspect in the development of diabetes. Next question, have you experienced drastic weight loss? All of a sudden your weight dropped very low in just probably one month without you doing anything. You did not exercise, you didn't go on a diet, but why did you lose weight? That is already suspect. Next question, are you a woman or a mother who have given birth to a baby who was nine pounds at delivery in weight? Because large babies come from diabetic mothers. The, the reason is the mother cannot supply his child inside the mother's womb with insulin because he doesn't have insulin also. So this baby will not have anything to break down or eat the blood sugar. So the baby tends to become bigger and bigger. Next question, are you overweight or obese? Now you know how to know if you are obese or not because I taught you in the earlier part of the lecture. Next, do you have high blood pressure? Then you must be, you, you can develop diabetes and should check your blood sugar. Next question, do you feel numbness or tingling sensation at the tips of your fingers or at the tips of your toes? They are like electrical current that pass there very briefly. 
This means you have blood supply to this area and you must already have diabetes or your pancreas also has blood has poor blood supply and you can develop diabetes next question have you previously checked your blood sugar and discovered this to be high then probably you have to check again next question are you usually tired for no apparent reason like today you just listen to the lecture of dr how and if you go to your hotel room then you will say oh i'm so tired i want to sleep but you didn't do anything you are the ones who are sitting there i am the one who is standing here so you must be diabetic And the last question is, do you have a sedentary lifestyle? By sedentary, we mean a person who, hasn't, who doesn't go out of his house, hasn't even see sunlight, and uh, stays there most of the time, sits in a sofa, watches TV, no? That's uh, practically what he does the whole day. And th the only time he stands up is to get more food from the refrigerator or from the kitchen so that he will not be hungry. That is a very sedentary lifestyle that can give you diabetes. So count your yeses now. If you answered only one yes, then you are poor risk to develop, low risk for develop, to develop diabetes. But you, if you answered two to four yeses, then you, you have a, modif a moderate risk to develop diabetes and should be change your diet already and modify your eating habits. And, but if you answered five or more than five yeses, then you go directly to the laboratory and find out if you are already diabetic. Next product we have to discuss is the lion's mane mushroom. Another very good product of ours that I was very sorry India doesn't have. But I wish that many of our products later on will also go to India because the more products, the more sales. That is, a, that is common sense business. And I really want to be able to help our India people, people whom I've, loved, I've learned to love all these years, uh, who have uh, proven to be very hospitable and uh, also very friendly. So the lion's mane mushroom may look like uh, cushions and even toys, no? stuffed toys. That's how they grow in the, in, in the forests as they attach the trees. And what is their application to our body? Middle Eastern, Asian, Filipinos, we all love oily and we all love uh, spicy food. And this, as, this is where our product lion's mane will be, be able to exert their effects if you have problems eating this uh, staple diet. Where, what parts of the body do they have benefits in? Number one, immune system, giving us our friendly soldiers again. Remember that all our products target the immune system. Second, it helps in the problems of the digestive system, like constipation and diarrhea. When we say digestive system, we mean anything that when food gets into the body and comes out of the anus after excretion, everywhere it passes is called the digestive system or the gastrointestinal system. It also has functions in neural nourishment. That means it feeds the nerve. So it's food for the nerves and it is also food for the memory cells. That's why we recommend this for students who have a lot to study and old people who forget a lot of things also. And then for cancer prevention. I would say that among our products, uh, as far as my researchers are concerned, lion's mane is number three in terms of uh, preventing cancer. Sec uh, third only to Ganoderma RGGL and spirulina. So lion's mane has, the, has these following applications. Stomach problems, intestinal problems, constipation, diarrhea, memory problems, old age students, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's disease, and even the Guillain's barre syndrome, as uh, the most recent I have read now. I haven't even included that to my slide. Next, we'll talk about cordyceps. It is known as a caterpillar mushroom or a caterpillar fungus because it looks like a worm, like a caterpillar. It is also known as winter worm summer grass because as it grows in the mountains like Nepal and Tibet, uh, it is actually a worm in winter, but when it is already summer, it becomes a grass. It, is, it has been an important ingredient in Chinese medicine that has been there for thousands of years. And it gives us stamina, endurance, and sex drive. Now, it actually became first famous because of its aphrodisiac effect. What is aphrodisiac? Aphrodisiac is a substance that you eat or drink that will increase your sexual urge or your libido or your desire for sex. Studies have also shown, especially in Beijing Medical University and Japan, that this can also be 
used for men who cannot develop erection anymore, even during sex. And they are called impotent men. They are suffering from impotence or erectile dysfunction.